Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Just got here, Mitsubishi Outlander having a quick look at us. Now, this vehicle has been in for a few DPF regions. Uh, oil changes continuously. Uh, it keeps having the oil level raise up. So, basically, yeah. It's regening too often and the oil level is raising up. So if we look at the engine here, I can see there is a wet patch here. Now if we come down here, you can see right there there's a hole in that boost tube. And that's going to be the reason why he keeps having DPF issues. I also found that the airbox wasn't closed properly. So it had a loud rumbling noise when you accelerate. And there is a slight rattle from the timing chain as well on this. Okay, so if we come inside the car here, we have 35 millibars of pressure at idle. And if we accelerate it up to 3000 RPM. Try and hold it steady, sorry. Try and hold that steady there. I have around 160 millibars of pressure. So we've got a slightly black DPF. I would prefer to just change this to millibar, but sometimes it just doesn't want to work. Oh, we just had it there. Okay, now this vehicle is over from Belgium, and he's had it again at various garages. They couldn't sort out this problem for him. So it's had few regens done, oil changes done, it's been to the dealership, uh, they done a service and then he's went to another garage and they said we can just delete the DPF, drill a hole in it and remap the ECU. Now I'll show you why that would not have worked and this is a good video I suppose to show people why you can't just jump straight in and remap and do a DPF delete and remap because your DPF is not the problem. Uh, it, it, your DPF is rarely ever the problem. Very, very rarely ever the problem. Your DPF is just telling you that there's something else wrong with the car somewhere else. And then, and if this guy got this car remapped, he still wouldn't have fixed the issue down there. And the car would have probably run worse once it had a remap because it would require more boost, and the car would just run worse probably. So. We'll go, go ahead and have a look at its, this uh, boost pipe. I'm going to see if I can do something temporarily. It's 6 o'clock in the evening and we're not going to get a DPF pipe for this car. So we'll see what we can do. Okay, so I've just taken off the pipes to see which pressure pipe I need to do a DPF clean. But obviously before we do that, we need to see if I can fix this issue here with the boost pipe. Get this engine cover off. Okay, now we'll be able to get a little bit of a clearer view at that hose pipe there that's got a split on it. You can see it's been spraying oil everywhere all around the engine there. So, see if we can do a little bit of a temporary repair on that until we can get a new pipe. Okay, I've disconnected the pipe there. I'm just going to put a bit of brake cleaner on it, clean it up, get the oil away. Okay, so just put a bit of industrial grade glue on that. We'll let that dry in. That'll just cut, seal up that slit hole there. And then to stop the holes expanding too much so it splits, I'm just gonna use a bit of this tape. We'll get that um, wrapped around it and that'll do temporarily. Uh, at least we can get the vehicle DPF cleaned out and the engine lights off. And then once we can get this pipe ordered up, it's gonna come from Mitsubishi, so it'll be at least a few days to get that. Okay, we've put the glue on it. I've put some of this tape on it just to stop the holes from expanding so much. Once you've got boost running through here, these hoses are designed to expand, so it will stretch out and then come back down again. Obviously with that split there, it's, that's not gonna be good because obviously that split's just gonna keep getting bigger and it will keep opening bigger as you rev it. Now the tape is not gonna hold that that gash. It's not gonna hold it for, from, from sitting out there. So obviously me putting that glue in there, put that rock solid but we don't want the glue to rip apart so just put this on it it's uh, reinforced tape paper whatever you call it 
can't remember the name but anyway it's a strong tape holds the pipe from stretching out and it will hold I've put that on and come back a week later when people have done it 500 miles and the, the pipe has still held with that glue and that tape there holding it now if we come over here we have the DPF pressure sensor and we have two holes so it's the second holes you got one holes right here one holes here and one holes here so this is the holes we're going to put the DPF cleaning fluid in so you got one on this side and one on that side it's the nearest one to the engine block that I'm putting the fluid into okay so this is the setup I'm using here I've got a compressor using launch UK DPF cleaning fluid and the gun that goes with that so I've got the gun attached to the compressor there there's the gun and we'll attach this to the holes that goes into the DPF there right there there it is so you just need to get a hold of that properly Get that squeezed together. Make sure it's on nice and tight. Now it's just a case of squeezing the trigger and it blows off. Okay, we've got that reattached. Um, took me a while there, but had to sort of hold the pipe while I was putting the flow through because there must have been a blockage in the pipe. As soon as you squeeze the trigger, the tube would blow off, but now we've got it flowing freely going in so I think down the end of that rubber hose there's a metal pipe and that would have had a blockage which was not allowing the DPF fluid to go in so when you squeeze the trigger it was just blowing off so we'll wait until all of this fluid is gone we'll see the this line will turn clear once we're finished okay so now we've put the engine cover back on Okay, back in the vehicle. Uh, let's go back to the codes now. Oh, we have the ignition off. Let's turn the ignition back on. I did clear some of these codes already. Uh, we've got one. So the engine oil level too high. It's already had an oil service now a few days ago. So that's sorted. Uh, this one, I did have a different code uh, than that, but obviously we've had the DPF sensor off with the engine on. Uh, we had one for the DPF blockage. So what we're going to need to do now is come back to special function and find the correct so maybe in DPF regeneration I don't want to perform a regeneration no okay initialization yep here we go DPF and DPF sensor exchange before we do that we're gonna to need to go back read the data stream get the pressure down first then we can reset the DPF okay we're gonna get in hold it up to 3000 rpm we can get it to stay there and we'll try and keep an eye on the DPF pressure so that is 180 millibars hundred and sixty five okay so after about a minute or so there we're down to 45 millibar that's where it should be let's let that idle down now five millibars that's exactly where you want it to be. We've got a bit of smoke there coming. Okay, now while that's done, we'll come out of the data stream back to special functions, initialization. Now with the engine off, ignition on, we're gonna do DPF and sensor exchange service. Perform. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try this one, DPF exchange. Okay. Communication issue as well. DPF sensor will do an engine oil exchange service as well. Uh, what's going on? Okay, we're going to clear the faults. We'll read it, read it again. So the oil one is still there. I need to come back and try and get this oil one reset in the initializations again. 
DPF system malfunction service. What's this one? Okay, that's completed. Engine oil exchange. Let's try that again. Okay, so we're pressed on that one. Sorry, I was doing this a little bit wrong. So we've reset that to zero. That's done. That's complete. Now, if we go back, we should be able to clear the fault code. Now the engine oil should be gone. That's it. Okay, now we start the engine back up. This vehicle's done 190,000 kilometers. We've got an ACC service, so that's the active cruise control. But that's not nothing what we're here to uh, to look at. So that's it basically, we've reset the oil service, we have reset the DPF, the pressure of the DPF is now down low, the small pipe that runs to the DPF pressure sensor has been cleared and the boost hose has been temporarily sealed up so you're not losing boost and causing DPF issues. So that's it, we'll, uh, we'll finish up the video, this guy can make his way back to Belgium and I'll see you on our next video. See you next time.